there, lovelies. Welcome to Flirting with Travel. I'm Lexi. I'm Diambe. And I'm Misty. And here at Flirting with Travel, we're three sisters that love traveling the globe. So today, what are we talking about? We talked about discrimination. So now we need to talk about like pros and cons of being an expat, being homesick, moving, and then we can like wrap it up with the countries that are black people friendly and kind of cheap countries to live in. Yeah, welcome back. We um, still here because we got things to discuss. <laughs> um, okay, so we wanted to share, we wanted to kind of help people who are talking about moving overseas uh, because we've each gone into that realm. So when I moved overseas, I was offered a job and um, it came with uh, housing already so I had company housing afforded for me we had a shared vehicle and then once you got to country um, I just brought two suitcases with my clothes in it I didn't ship any household goods because I didn't anticipate on being here five years but yeah oh, here I am. Um, high and dry I wasn't I was I thought I'd be back but um so when I got here, I was able to move into my company housing right away. And then we shared a company vehicle. And a couple months in, I looked for my own place, which was a completely different experience than America. Like we have Zillow and LoopNet and Apartment Finder and Apartment.com. None of the homes here are really listed online. They, they, they have a really huge Instagram culture where businesses... Mm -hmm uh advertise on their on their instagram you can make your orders that's how you find the places but like dot coms and websites it's just it doesn't exist so i went like building to building if i like that building i went into that building i tried to find somebody to show me an apartment and that's how i picked my apartment um, you're literally just walking into buildings yes i was literally <laughs> you know, walking busy. into buildings walking into apartments like oh this is nice Trying to Show find anybody and everything. It was rough. It was so rough because the building I end up my first building living here, nobody spoke English. So, well, but how did you awful. know to do that? Like, did you have people who lived there, expats who gave you, you know, like put you up on game, or did you just was it really just trial and error? It was really trial and error. Uh, me and my friend so Tracy, she decided, huh? Hmm? Your first thought was to just walk into a random building? Well, I, how, was I, how else was I going to find an apartment? Oh, the thing they, okay, the other thing they do here somebody. was, I, I did ask some people. So when you're looking for a place here, they have realtor services, right? And people who freelance, I actually moonlight as a realtor out here at, at times to help people find apartments. But um, what they do is they charge you a fee. So if your rent is $1,500 a month, if that's what your rent is, then you have to give the realtor half of that month's fee. So if it's $1,500 to move in plus $1,500 deposit, then you have to give them $750 for their finder's fee of helping you find an apartment. Um, and I was just like... I think somebody told me about it and I said, it didn't make sense. It didn't make sense to me. I'm like, what do you mean? I can't just go to like, they don't have apartment complexes here either. They just have a building. Why can't oh, I just so go in there like, and walk to in? Front office? No, there's no front <laughs> offices. So I was just, we just drove around for like a week and a half and you'd see like for rent signs and you call the number. They would not really speak English. You'd go through this whole like, thing and so when I found my place they'll figure out how to get your money they will do that but if you go find a place yourself you don't have to pay anybody okay yeah so that's weird and like you <laughs> rolled right into company housing already prepped so what did you bring with you um I brought two suitcases with a bunch of clothing I actually you know what like one suitcase was just filled up with hair stuff which is the smartest thing you could do moving as right. a naturalista to Japan because I mean, I what went my hair you real quick. to packing mm -hmm. that? Did you like research it beforehand or was it just like a, Oh, I'm going to bring this stuff with me. So I have it initially. You know what? I didn't really research it beforehand. And if I had it to do all over again, I would have, but I think I just intuitively knew that when I had basically an Afro that 
Japanese people did not have that hair and knowing what we need, like how thick of creams you need for your hair and how thick conditioner you need. I was like, uh, I bet you it's all going to be like Pantene and they do have Pantene over there, but they have like, they got a different type of Pantene. They have Pantene for silky straight hair. Like you think yeah. the Pantene here that's non colored people Pantene is like Pantene for silky straight hair. Mm -mm. They go different. They're like conditioner is water. I thought, oh my God, I hate it. I hate it so much. I just need a cream for my did hair. Did I into all of that? I mean, that's a whole different thing that we could talk about. But like Pantene did have like a naturals line <laughs> and then they just continued it so quick that I'm like, hair is hair and you have to tailor your like routine and what you need to your specific hair. But <laughs> I mean, like a product is a product. I'm over here with um, herbal essences, okay? You can't tell me I'm gonna stay with herbal essences and then add my little <laughs> like extras in there. But no, it is a product. But here's the thing: like a curly hair product tends to be a bit thicker. It offers more moisture. Like I'll use John. Well, not anymore. Back in the day, I would use John Frieda. It might not be like pointed toward the black community, but it was curly hair product. There. It's all for like silky straight hair. There was no yeah. moisture in it. So I was trying to like translate what, what olive oil was in Japanese so I could actually find the right oil just so I could get some moisture on my hair. That was such a struggle. And then it's so human Only there. Only to so find out that she's allergic. <laughs> oh my God. It just makes me so itchy. You guys and these random ass allergies it's so crazy like who are you <laughs> delicate i'm a delicate flower and i will not be talked to like i'm not. why you're gonna break out <laughs> <laughs> mean words give me hives <laughs> so, so uh, but that okay. is a, it's a really did you bring hair products when you moved to the bahamas Diambe, or did how do, how did, did they do with that are they good um i bet not Actually, <sighs> they're about the same. Right like, now. they don't have like um, they have like the same line as like Walgreens would, right? Like the same kind of products. I mean, don't uh, come to Walgreens. They got some good stuff though. Walgreens had listen, okay. But that's why I'm saying like Walgreens, like it's about that. It's about that that same caliber <laughs> and um. Their beauty supply stores are, they're pretty well stocked. So you can get, you know, you can get things tailored for us. I didn't bring anything because I figured what I don't, what I can't find in a pinch out there, I'll be commuting back and forth. I'll just bring in from the States um, and, and use here. So when we moved, it was, uh, we rolled into, well, it wasn't technically company housing, um, but we could stay at the hotel until we found a place and they give you like 45 days um, to do so. Um, nice. So we found a house and all the houses out here are furnished, fully furnished to include like dishes and all that stuff. So mm -hmm. you just buy what you want. Like we bought new sheets and whatnot to put on the beds, but they have sheets there. So you really don't have to buy much of anything here, which was great. Yeah. So really you need new sheets. Huh? They get, get fresh sheets. No, absolutely. But if you didn't want to, because you're like, well, you don't have to because they have it. But no, absolutely. We yeah. bought new um, uh, as far as car, like, you know, they would either provide like a company car or a stipend so that you can get your own, um, you can rent your own vehicle. Um, what I, what we did do was because I transferred over to Florida to be closer, have a better schedule. Um, we shipped the car, uh, using, I don't even know who it actually shipped through because we booked one party and then they transferred, they like contracted it out to another company who was like complete shit um so i would say like we really didn't have a lot of moving parts i just like would truck bags two at a time check bags over with like clothing and you know uh different things so you didn't actually ship anything like from your entire house you had what a three four bedroom house in nevada 
sold, you, did, you just put it all in storage? No, we sold slash gave away all of the furniture, like all of it, but we kept the barn doors. That you never put up. <laughs> That's vital. <laughs> I will say um, I, on that note, just to give it, I, I just sent my friend's stuff home. She moved, she moved back to the States. So I shipped all her belongings home. Um, an air conditioned security control storage unit here cost that uh, it was about 10 by 15. It cost $335 a month to hold the stuff. And then from there I got a shipping company. And so the shipping company cost to go from Kuwait to the East Coast, it was um, $3,200 for about a two bedroom apartment worth of furniture. So that is how much, just have pricing if you're gonna do household mm -hmm. goods. So if your company doesn't give you a stipend for household goods, which a lot of them do actually, if they'll allow you to relocate, yeah. you wanna ask for that. In your package, when you come over, one of the benefits of being an expat, when you take a job to work overseas, if you just don't independently move, it is the stipends that come with. So I have a vehicle yes. stipend and housing stipend. And you should ask for a relocation allowance. Um, and so that was, but that was what it, it cost her $3,200, $3,300 to ship it home. Mm -hmm. And then the storage that is, fees. That is a good point because our we have a, a housing and a car stipend um, should you choose to like use it. But that was a big thing because we still own the house and we've since put renters into it. But I was like, I just, I don't see how we can do two, like essentially two mortgages. And she was like, no, it, it covers like your, your housing. Um, they give you a stipend for that. So that, you know, made the difference. So yeah, like you're saying, Misty, if you can ask for, you know, something in the way of a housing allowance um, and or a car allowance, depending on what you do and how far you are from, right. you know, company. So on the opposite side, I didn't have shit. I didn't own shit when I moved. So <laughs> I took all my stuff in two, two suitcases. <laughs> I was like, well, this is life. I moved into a furnished apartment. That was Those two suitcases were the size of you. They were, they were pretty huge. big suitcases. I mean, I had a lot of clothing, and at the time, I was sewing. And so, you know what? I didn't take my sewing machine initially. That was shipped over by uh, mom, like, midway through. Thanks, mom. Because honestly, that's one thing I didn't research. Just being plus size, I didn't realize, like, how small Japanese people are. Like, they oh, are uh, tiny which means that I don't think I bought a pair of pants the entire two and a half years I was there. Once I got through like my pants and I'm like, oh, these pants are not fitting me anymore. I was like, mom, you better send my sewing machine so I can make some stuff. So that's something to consider if you happen to move to uh, anywhere in Asia because they're, they're small. I mean, I yeah. lost a whole bunch of weight while I was there because I was walking. I didn't get a car stipend. So I was either <laughs> on foot or on the train and I only worked two stations away from where I lived, which meant that that's all they pay for is my two stations. So anywhere else, they're like, you better pay oh. for that yourself because we're not covering you. Well, they gave <laughs> you a transportation own. allowance. Well, they did for those two stations and that they weren't even big stations. So it wasn't like, <laughs> oh, let me go to this shopping center in Tokyo. They're like, bitch, buy that yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Don't but, sorry, I mom, mean, pardon um, my language. <laughs> Sorry, mom. No, that was, but that's a thing to consider um, because it does offset your costs. And um, the flights, they normally always give you a fly allowance and annually. I didn't move into a furnished apartment here because it was cheaper to go unfurnished. But I will say in Kuwait, when they say unfurnished, they literally mean unfurnished. They are not giving you stoves, refrigerators, and rentals. Oh. They're not giving you a stove, a refrigerator. And a rental? They, yeah, that you, you do have to buy all of that. You get no furniture. So I've bought, since I've been here, two stoves. I've, I have a refrigerator. I have a fully furnished house now. What about like washing but, machines? No, they're not providing a washing machine either. So my first apartment did not have a washing machine, nor did it have a washing machine hookup. The guy, the... In, bro in, in very like Google Translate, mm -hmm. emoji, gestures type of situations. We came to the 
uh, agreement that if I wanted a washing machine, he would put it in the second bathroom shower area so he could hook up the water. Man. You had to take out a shower to put in a wash. I mean, it's worth it. I would always put a washing machine. But you have to take out a shower. Yeah. Wait, do I, I, I did that dryer. Too. I didn't. I didn't get a washing machine the first year and a half. I just went I'm to my washing. friend's house and washed. Oh, I went to Lukey's house to wash. <laughs> I'd be like, "Hey, girl, you know it's that time of the week. You know, I gotta come. <laughs> I got home. That time of the me. week. <laughs> That's too much." So do you, it was, you have a you dry You have a dryer, right? Me? Now I... Yeah. yeah. The house comes okay. with it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I have the all-in-one all washer appliances. dryer. Oh, uh, I hate those. They're terrible, though. They kind of are. <laughs> they, they make you only put in, like, five articles of clothing. I do not deal with those. Granted, in Japan, you don't have dryers. That's something to note. If you're going to Japan, if you find a house with a dryer, honestly, just message us. Comment on this if you found a place in Japan that has a dryer because you're a unicorn. Um, I mean, I, she was, a, and it gets cold there too. So that was the does. thing. You're outside. You know what? It's not even the cold what got me. I think one day I'd wash my stuff, I put it on the line, then I had to go to work. But then a, um, a typhoon came in blew all my underwear off of my porch down the street. So when I was walking home at 9 p.m. at night, I saw some underwear and I'm like, that's weird. Whose underwear out here? I'm like, those look like mine. And then I just noticed like, right, just thrown down the street of my underwear and socks. And I'm like, it's not even like I can find underwear in my size here. <laughs> Damn. I was so mad. So after here. that, I would always start putting my stuff inside and put it back out when I'm home, just in case it gets windy. Oh, that was frustrating. At least you have fresh air. I, I have a dryer horse here, though. I mean, I think they're awesome. Oh, uh, okay. That's a good idea. I put my stuff outside, and it comes with its own benefits and, uh, and losses. But that's, that's the thing about living as an expat. There are certainly challenges here but when you move overseas there are challenges that you never anticipated but for you all um what are like what's the the biggest challenge that you face as being an expat where you are um the language. man if that's not a challenge misty I would have thought you would have been fluent by now. I know Arabic is hard and you were explaining um, in a previous episode how there were so many, there were different dialects. And um, so I, I like, I can't imagine that. I was the same say, time you shaded her for not speaking Arabic. What? I know, right? I'm trying, Diambe. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm like, I Arabic, Chinese, and Russian are the hardest languages to learn from what I've read. Russian over Arabic. I. I find that. <laughs> Have you been studying Russian to know? <laughs> I just feel like that's that list lies, right? I just I, I feel like you know what I will say that the pandemic is doing because in Kuwait, in the Middle East, they're still going through um, their the coronavirus and ensuring that the population is protected from it. We we haven't moved on from that. I'm still in a partial curfew here, six p.m. I U.S. said that that was done. Racism took over. <laughs> back to back to our normally uh program right no um, i don't know i would say maybe like the selection which sounds it's not a big thing at all um just having a variety of things like oh you know what i want this face wash well mm -hmm. you get what they have which isn't like much in the way of variety so I would usually like plan, like make a list and then go shopping and bring it back with me into the country. Um, so just planning that, because if I like ordered anything, if I shipped, like ordered anything on Amazon, shipping is so much over here. I, I just, I'm so done, so done. I'm going to buy it in the States and bring it over. So planning has been the biggest thing to overcome, to make it coincide with work trips and make sure that it'll be wherever I am um, in the States so that I can bring it back. But if that's I'm, like- I'm blessed in that sense. I ship too. I work on a, a base, an American base. Mm -hmm. So we have APL shipping. Cause yeah. 
it automatically doubles the price. So if you spend $150, your shipping is going to be like $85 to $90. Yes. It is so it's, nuts. It's it crazy. is so nuts. We ordered um, some stuff because we have a tennis court down in our, um, in our housing subdivision. There's a tennis court down by the pool area. And so we're like, you know what? I think I'll learn how to play tennis. Um, <laughs> And so I was like, oh, you know, I want to order like some tennis skirts and like the little shirts and whatnot. And we ordered the stuff off of Amazon, not even thinking like it's coming from a different seller. Some of these items are coming from different oh. sellers, so they ship independently. So I buy a skirt for $30, $15 of that. I have to pay on each individual, like whatever the price is, basically half of it to send it over. Yeah. I was like. Yeah, but you know, you could have just sent your Amazon stuff to me and I would have shipped it to you. Just cut those tags right off. Well, we were using that shipping service that Misty, well, like a shipping service, um, and I don't remember the name of it because we, um, a friend Was said it myshipus.com? I don't know what it is. I ordered from Joss and Maine one time. I ordered a bunch of little furniture, like accent pieces from Joss and Maine, and I used my friend's forwarding service, kind of like how you use yours. Yeah. So I was, he said, he was like, oh yeah, you can use mine. I was like, cool, just let me know and I'll, I'll pay you for the shipping costs. I did not know that Joss and Maine individually sent things. When I tell you I had ordered 15 items, he called me one day. He was like, Misty, what in the fuck are you ordering? <laughs> I had ran up a $300 shipping bill for him. And I yes. was like, oh my God. It, it came yeah. in like 10 individual boxes. I felt so yes. bad. So that is definitely something to be aware of. They have shipping services, but the easiest way is to send it to somebody in the States and have them because they will put everything together in one package. So you're only pay paying the shipping price for one package and not seven to how, oh man, we had like 30 items. Yeah. So in, you know, in, just, the Bahamas, in the Middle East, go ahead. What were you going to say? I was going to say, in the Bahamas and the Middle East, they don't have, like, their own Amazon. Because when I was in Japan, I uh, got familiar with Rakuten. And it's, like, their Amazon. It has everything. And so I started ordering from there. And that changed my life. No, I don't um, think so. Not Bahamas. The, the middle, they're kind of, um, UAE, U United Arab Emirates, they have Amazon. So they have an Amazon now, but Kuwait does not have an Amazon. Like online shopping is just now coming on like a thing. It's, it's just now starting to be a thing here. They really do enjoy going into the stores, touching, feeling the materials and stuff. So yeah. um, a lot of the websites, because of the pandemic over here, a lot of the stores launched their website so that they could be able to sell online uh, just because they were trying to do anything to keep, you know, money coming in. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the, that was that was a thing. Also, um, what was I going to say? Oh, I forgot. I lost my train of thought. Well, Bahamas has, you were talking about Amazon, and there's like, you can, it'll automatically select the country you're in, but that also dwindles down the number of items that you have available to be sent mm -hmm. to you. So ah. it's like, oh, okay, I want a shirt. So it goes from 30 options to like seven. You better like one of those seven. Yeah. Okay. I, just ship it. So, Misty, Kuwait is pretty expensive to live, no? It's not cheap. I don't say that much. It's not Bahamas cheap. Bahamas is pretty expensive to live because Japan is not cheap either. Everything. So, in that, like, some of the cheaper countries to live in, I got a list, okay? Y'all ready? Okay. Yes. Tell us the list. Thailand, Costa Rica, South Africa, mm -hmm. South Korea, Vietnam, Mexico, and China. I'm kind of curious about South Africa and South Korea because they're, they're booming economies. Like South Korea to me would be along the same lines as Japan, but if, if they're saying it's cheap, check it out. Like honestly though, South Korea could be cheap if you get the right job. Because, like, being in Japan, I got a teaching job, and I had to pay for my ticket there, but they subsidized my rent. I think I had to pay for my electricity. You didn't pay for, like, water, gas, trash. 
all of those were included in either your rent or they just didn't charge you. That's part of your taxes. Um, but I don't know, South Korea feels like it, it would be expensive. So I've, I've been there. Their food's not cheap. <laughs> I, I thought South Africa w is not super cheap, but if it made the list, and I would say a lot of the jobs, if you're younger, um, if you are younger, teaching English is a really good way to kind of move out of America and become an expat. You just need yeah. to pass the TEFL. And I know Kuwait, though, they've just started enforcing that you have to have a degree in education. But a lot of countries will allow you to come with just your TEFL and to teach English. So well, I taught at an in English language school in Japan. I did not have to take the TEFL or the TESOL. I, all you needed was a degree in anything, and then you'd go over because they didn't want to have to unteach. It's kind of like, um, who is it, in and out They won't take you if you've worked at like another fast food place because they don't want to have to unteach bad. They're serious. They want people that have never worked before because they have their customer service and the way they do things and they don't want to you, you shouldn't have to unlearn anything they want you to like learn it exactly the way that they do it and that's the way they do it yeah it's, that's ridiculous i mean that's kind of like you know if you, you work for one airline as a flight attendant and then you go to another one like it's hard that's why some places are the same way but i can see that for an airline company but for a burger joint I mean, how many customer service complaints have you ever heard about in and out Like, I've heard some weird things about their politics, but I've never heard anything about their customer service. And I think that's part of the reason why is because they're very selective in who they choose. And so the company I taught for, Eon, it's A-E-O-N, very similar. I, but it's just, just a bit of information. If you want to join the JET program, you would need your TEFL. And it's also really good for teaching in Japan. That will also, I think, take you to other places. No, JET won't take you to others. But like, if you want to teach in China, you need your TEFL. And I forgot what that acronym stands for. It's like English language something. Yeah, but, and it's a good, I think it's only a couple hundred dollars to get. And it's so worthwhile the, yeah, the travel arrangements you should make when you're moving overseas update your passport in short has um you know at least you can't have anything under six months validity on your passport so try to renew and have as many pages as possible um and obtain your necessary visas like kuwait does it need a visa here you get a residency visa through your country your company but you have a uh, residency diame um i don't sam well yes i have um Per, uh, no, a permit to reside. Sam has um, a residency through the company. Okay, yeah. These are so different. Then, residency uh, and permit, or a residency residency and permit to reside are different. Yes, okay. because like residency, you can work. Like she's on a, I guess, like a work visa, right? So yeah. like you can work. You um, they categorize it differently. I can't work in the Bahamas. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it, oh, so you're it, like a family visa. Basically. Yeah. Just a, a permit to reside in conjunction with her, her, or her, um, work visa. Okay. Or not we have several visa. different levels of visas here too. You have a 14 is a tourist visa. 18 is a permit to work. 17 is the ministry of defense visa that you can work with them. Um, 20 are like, maids 22 there's like several different levels and they change your treatment based off of your visa level well i would say if you go somewhere maybe have like a job lined up because i went to japan and i was going with a company they not only sponsored my visa they did all of the paperwork i couldn't even tell you what kind of visa i had because i literally just showed up and they're like okay we got your paperwork do you have a passport and i'm like yeah i've got that and then they're like okay well let's take you to the house get you trained and then take you to your apartment i even had someone go with me to like the cell phone store to get my cell phone set up um and like they would have gone with me to get my wi-fi set up and full disclosure i think i stole wi-fi for two and a half years but um <laughs> if i had decided to pay for it they would have helped me <laughs> Sorry, oh, I will say that we actually don't have electric bill here either. We don't have electric water or 
gas. Okay. So real quick, let's talk about um, countries that are friendly to people of color, specifically um, black people friendly. And this came from the Travel Noir website. So the UK, Panama, Canada, and Costa Rica. So for those of you who are still wanting to get out of the US, huh? Only four in the entire world. That's what, wow. um, check out those places uh, if you want a break from US racism. <laughs> Definitely. And we shout Maya. out to Travel Noir for telling us that there are only four places that like us. That hurt. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, that's news. So thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of um, Being an Expat Moving Abroad. We hope that we were able to give you some really good information. Please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, like, give us a thumbs up, and turn on notifications so that you can get all of our alerts. Got stuff for y'all. <laughs> right. <laughs> And you can and binge watch. We have 17 episodes available. But thank you so much. Take care of yourselves, your mental health, your physical health. And, you know, be safe. Bye.